the OG or the original number one version of a job to be done was Clayton Christensen. Howard Business School professor came up with the concept. He's also the one that created the disruptive innovation concept and a lot of other things. So he's a gold mine of really, really useful business concepts. After innovation, he created jobs to be done. Jobs to be done is the theory that customers are not buying drills, they're buying holes, right? So I'm actually not looking for a product, I'm looking for a solution. I'm looking for something to get done. So I want to, I have an outcome that I'm in the market to achieve. And then I'm looking at different candidates for that solution. And so if I'm hungry, I can get a burger or I can get a banana or I can get a milkshake or I can like read a self-help book and do intermittent fasting, right? So there are different ways I can solve a problem. And then each of them has pros and cons and they will present themselves to you in different ways. And they are then the candidates for your job to be done. But the idea is that you have some sort of a demand or direction that you want to go in. And then you have different vehicles that can take you there. And essentially he said, well, um, there is, there's this tendency in marketing where we try to sell to people as if they are sort of uh, just a demographic, right? So I will sell to whatever man, 40 years old, like middle-class income level drives this car, right? That becomes a demographic or has clicked these things on social media, whatever it is. And they are, they are now my audience. Instead of saying, Hey, I want to sell baseball tickets to everyone who's interested. And then it might be that that person, that man, 40 years old, middle, you know, class income drives this car is the most common person that is interested in, in, in baseball, basketball, whatever it was, but that it, it's not because of those attributes that he's interested. You get 15 year old girls and you get, you know, old men and everybody else is interested as well, regardless of their demographic. So what they have in common isn't their demographic, it's what they're interested in. And this was his insight of saying, Hey, if we just focus on the goal of, of the outcome and then market to everyone that has that outcome as their intention, then that will be a lot smarter and better for us whenever we want to sell something in the market. Right? So, um, so that was sort of his contribution. And he wrote a book called competing against luck, which was essentially, Hey, if you want to do it smartly and you just don't want to rely on luck, think about it in this way, jobs to be done, killer concept. Here it is. There you go. Now that book was pretty high level in terms of concept. It was like, here's a concept. It's really useful. Um, go use it. What it didn't do was it didn't break it down. There was no math in it. There was no frameworks. There was no sort of, you know, checklist and so forth. It was just like a conversation about why people actually buy things and how we can think about taking something to market. Then comes along Tony Alwick. He's really interested in the jobs to be done concept that Clayton Christensen did. And Tony Alwick has a design agency. So he helps software companies and corporates design products and services. And he says, Oh, this job to be done is great, but we need to sort of, we need to create like a process where we can work with it. So he, he ends up creating a very comprehensive design process around jobs to be done. And he publishes a book, which I actually think is called jobs to be done by Tony Alwick. Pretty great book. But what he does is he said, well, a job to be done is that a user of a product is, you know, somewhere in their user journey, and then they need to go somewhere else. And then that is their job to be done. They have an intent or a direction. And then we need to design the user interface or the product and the service so that the user can get to that next step. And then the next step and the next step. Now, Clayton thinks of jobs to be done on a customer level. Alwick thinks of jobs to be done on a user level. Clayton thinks, why are they buying it? And Alwick thinks, how are they using it? Or why are they using it at this particular point in time? This is really good to design value propositions. And this is really good to design products. People use jobs to be done without this distinction in mind. So for example, your product team or most product teams will know about the concept of jobs to be done. However, most of them will think about it in the Tony Alwick sense. Now packaging is what you sell to the buyer, to the customer. So, and this is where the chain comes off a lot because you should very clearly distinguish between who is 
buying the software and who's using the software. Especially if you have a large ACV, large annual contract value, because then very often it is an executive that buys the software. Someone has PL responsibility and says, yes, we will buy the CRM system for a million dollars a year. But the person that says yes to that decision isn't the person that is actually using the CRM system. But as soon as we have to create the offering and create our whatever basic advanced enterprise tier and the modules and the services and so forth, like all the things that we're using as assets to sell to the customer, then we need to have the Clayton Christensen method in mind saying, what are you trying to achieve? Because with sales software, what we're trying to achieve is probably sales, right? So a CRM software is there to make me more money. So we need to convince the buyer that the CRM system that we're going to give you is going to be really efficient and it's going to make you a lot of money. That means less to the user. Like they just want to have a nice interface and be able to like hit their quota or whatever. So you might say that Clayson Christensen actually sort of opened the door and that all the is actually talking about this sort of second sale, the, the usage of the product as his version of jobs to be done. You just need to be really mindful that whenever someone says, oh, jobs to be done, we have that mapped out. We already did all that work. Just ask them like, like which, which of them did you do? Did you do the, the user version or did you do the, the buyer or the customer version here? I actually had a product once or a project once where, where I, I agreed with my client and we were going to talk about jobs to be done. And we had all this like mapped out. Everybody was really excited because I like jobs to be done, they, they like jobs to be done. And then once we started the, the project, we figured out that I was thinking here and they were thinking there. And it's actually one of the few projects I have where, where the collaboration didn't go that well because we were just like totally misaligned on, um, on, uh, on which version of jobs to be done we were talking about. They were talking about user journeys and so forth. And I was talking about like high level value propositions to buyers. So. The good outcome of that project is that we, you know, we ended it amicably, it was fine, and I get to make this video for you guys. All right, so good luck with it and thank you.